Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And can you believe it? One year ago today, I uploaded a little video about traffic light, manipulating traffic lights, taking advantage and exploiting the Opticom system with a uh, dirty Mert system based on the flipper. The flipper was being used as the time base. And this video of mine uh, just exploded online. It was in multiple publications around the world in all different languages. It was absolutely insane. And uh, yeah, one year ago, the video has now received over 1.2 million views. It's just unbelievable. Okay, guys, I'm going to cover this again. And at the end of this video, I'm going to play the original video again. But what really started it all was, well, somebody was saying, can a flipper zero control traffic lights? And I knew how the Opticom uh, preemption system worked. And it's based on one of these actual sensors, which I actually obtained. And if you look underneath here, it is Opticom made by 3M. It is a model 721. This is a dual sensor, can be pointed in two different directions. It is an infrared optical system. So you can see in there, those lenses are focusing that on a infrared uh, photo transistor inside. And uh, those tubes are making it extremely directional. So it's only, it's kind of like blinders on a horse. It's looking straight down whatever roadway, and it is looking for that 14 hertz coming from an infrared transmitter. Now, this one today, I actually hooked two of them up to make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, yeah, if you had two of them, it would actually be really beneficial. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you, like before, we focus on that. You can see the phone has an infrared filter, so it doesn't really pick those up very well. But this camera does not. And you can see how much brighter it is in the infrared spectrum. Let me focus that. So, yeah. So that 14 hertz pulsing LEDs is picked up by one of these uh, Opticom sensors up on a traffic light uh, system. And uh, that signal is then sent to the phase controller, which is controlling the traffic light sequence. And uh, it's quite simple, really, how that works. And uh, it will hold the traffic light green for the direction that the Opticom signal is being detected in. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you some of the pages that or stories that covered my Opticom system over the past year. And um, I also want to introduce today IOTMug.com. They are a sponsor of the channel, but I am also working for them as a consulting engineer. And we are going to be bringing out some uh, Flipper Zero products uh, out on devices, and uh, namely something like this. And uh, also uh, mesh, uh, Meshtastic. Uh, we're looking at doing some Meshtastic stuff. So I'm going to show you their site right now. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, I would like to welcome our new sponsor, IoT Mug. Not only are they a sponsor, I am working with them as a consulting engineer, and I am going to be helping them develop some new products, namely products that will work with the Flipper Zero, things that you have not seen before. And uh, do check out IoTMug.com for many really interesting and cool devices. I was quite interested in their traffic light controllers that they build. They're actually pretty nice, and I'm actually using one myself on my traffic lights. So, uh, and I'll actually show you those traffic lights I got running out in my garage. Anyways, guys, look at this, and tell me what you think about that. That is going to be an infrared blaster that is going to be able to hit Opticoms. A battery to this as well because of the power demand. So guys, check it out, check out IoT Mug. Okay guys, so one year ago today, believe it or not, it says here 11 months, but uh, by the time you see this, it will be one year. I'm recording this the day before. 1.2, we just went over 1.2 million views. It's insane. And I really wanna thank all you guys when I started this channel and I launched this video, I had less than a thousand subscribers. Um, went over a thousand subscribers in just a day or so after this video went up. And really, what happened? I uploaded it on the 11th and on the 16th. 
It was published in the drive. I had no knowledge of this. Um, he, this guy Rob, picked it up, saw it on my channel, decided to go out and make a video about it. Uh, Hacker uncovers how to turn traffic lights green with a flipper zero. And then he says there's innocent tinkering and there's uh, illegal. Guess which category this falls into. Yes, of course, if you get caught doing this in the US, it is a felony. So, you know, everybody knows that. So uh, here you go, guys. And there is the article that started it all. And uh, he called me a tinkerer named Peter Fairley. <laughs> okay. So anyways, it went from there. And the next thing I know, Motor Biscuit, they were doing it as well a couple days later on the 18th. And uh, yeah, so then all of a sudden it started getting picked up by some more major things like Microsoft had it on their site. Um, really cool to see that. And then Yahoo, jumped over to Yahoo. Uh, really big. And then the next thing you know, uh, yeah, all these other publications around the world started picking it up. Uh, here he goes. Hacker creates device that turns red light to green. Um, I really realized that it was just something that everybody could relate to because everybody hates sitting at red lights. And then I started seeing it in other languages. This is like German or Austrian. And then um, it was even in, in Russia. The Russians were, uh, and the Russians actually, um, let me translate this. Here we go, we can actually translate it. Yeah, Canadian engineer. Thank you, Russians, for calling me. Everybody was calling me a tinkerer, but the Russians actually called me an engineer, which was very respectful. And uh, yeah, so yeah, on February 12th, Canadian engineer, inventor, Peter Fairley. They did spell my name wrong, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, de demonstrated it on his YouTube channel. So, and then uh, really cool, the Internet Archive uh, picked it up. So it's officially archived forever. So there you go, guys. And I am now going to play you the video in its entirety as it was uploaded one year ago today. Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for making my channel. I have now um, 31,600 subscribers. I put out a lot of other videos, but I really want to thank everybody uh, for being a subscriber and uh, hope you enjoy a lot more videos to come, guys. Thank you. Hey, guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, for another installment of really cool things to do with a Flipper Zero. Um, I've seen this question asked many times on YouTube and on Reddit, and I'm going to answer that question today. And that is, can a Flipper Zero control traffic lights? And the simple answer is yes, with the right hardware. And that's what I built here today to demonstrate. There's our Flipper Zero, and Flipper Zero is generating a 14 hertz pulse. Now that, just keep, remember that, that pulse rate, 14 hertz, that's a magic number. That is outputting on the GPIOs, and that's coming over here to a little circuit I built today. That chip is a uh, optocoupler, so the flipper is actually powering the optocoupler, the, the uh, LED inside it. And there, this particular optocoupler has a Darlington transistor pair uh, controlling the output. And uh, that's what we're witnessing right there. That green LED flashing is actually flashing at 14 hertz. And that is also wired over to this infrared uh, array. That's actually 42 infrared high power LEDs. And uh, that is out of a security camera. There's another one there out of a security camera. Um, easy to find these. Any, any old security camera will do. Um, one thing you have to do is jumper. There is a light sensor on there, so it only works at night. I did put a jumper, right? You can see that on the back. And uh, basically, yeah, this thing's running on 12 volts. It may not look very bright because this camera that most phones have an infrared filter. Um, however, get an old camera like one of these and, you know, one of these old uh, Canon cameras. And you will see, uh, I mean, this it, how incredibly bright that is. Yeah. So, there you go. That's really what it looks like.
you know, if you could see infrared, um, it, it's incredibly bright and it needs to be because it needs to transmit to an Opticom sensor up on the traffic light system. And I'm going to just show you, first of all, first of all, a little bit of a history on Opticom. Okay, there's an Opticom sensor. This is one that would be used on an emergency vehicle. Uh, back in, in the 1970s, 3M, well-known company, 3M, came up with an ingenious idea to be able to create, you know, make traffic lights sense that an emergency vehicle is coming. And they, they did it optically by using a light sensor that could detect strobe lights. So that worked well, but there was a problem. They couldn't differentiate between an ambulance, a police car, and a fire truck. So what they did is they developed a system that could sense either 10 hertz, 12 hertz, or 14 hertz. Um, each one had a different priority. And uh, let me just change it here. This is actually an Opticom sensor that you'll see up on the traffic light pole. And those are a lot of different Opticom uh, transmitters. And you can see they're just a bunch of black LEDs, uh, same as what I'm using. And yeah, you can let me see, go down here, some other pictures of where, oh, well, there's a traffic light with one on, on the top. Yeah, so depending on, uh, where you reside, the system could be different. There's the Opticom sensor up on top of a traffic light. I typically see them around where I am. They're actually on the poles, similar to that. <clears throat> so, okay, I'll give you a little rundown here. The of how it works. receives the transmitted infrared signal, turns it into an electrical impulse, and sends it to a phase selector located in the traffic control cabinet. The phase selector works with the signal controller's normal operation to cycle to a green light for the oncoming emergency vehicle. Traffic responds naturally. Cross street traffic stops and traffic in front of the emergency vehicle clears. The Opticom infrared system is designed to initiate signal changes that seem normal to other traffic at affected intersections, reducing confusion. The infrared emitter is a forward-only transmitter, so the Opticom infrared system does not affect parallel streets. Proper programming of the signal controller timing minimizes disruption to cross traffic. The goal is smooth, rapid advance of the emergency vehicle through... In okay, I think we understand that part now. Okay, so 3M later on sold the technology to a company called GTT, Global Traffic Technologies. It might have even been a spinoff of 3M. Um, and there you go. There's our frequencies, 10, 12, and 14 hertz. Yes. Now, some of the more modern day systems, actually, they can encode an ID number in, in, in that infrared information, which is like a vehicle number. Um, so this may or may not work on all Opticom systems. However, from what I've heard, um, it works in quite a few areas. I'm not going to say where, but yeah, if you do want to, you know, put this together and try it out for yourself, go, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop you, but it is, if you get caught doing this, it could be a problem. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah. Okay, guys. So that's basically it. Can a Flipper Zero control traffic lights? Well, it sure can. There we are at 14 hertz. And actually, I'm going to show you. That's 14 hertz. And then I'm going to change it. Oops, we go back up here. And 13, that's 12 hertz. And I'll slow it down. And that's 10 hertz. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, you can see. 14 has more of a buzz to it, more psychedelic. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to actually attach a video about from Flipper Zero on how to use the frequency generator. Have a good one.
check out the new Flipper Zero feature, Signal Generator. Go to the main menu, Applications, Tools, and run the Signal Generator. We need the PWM Generator, which means Pulse with Modulation. Now let's connect the blue LED to the GPIO pins to visualize the signal and oscilloscope probe to see the actual form of this signal. We can start with a signal frequency of 1 Hz, which means 1 pulse per second, and start to increase the frequency. We can see that LED is blinking faster while we change the frequency, and the graph on the oscilloscope is changing too. So guys, the optocoupler I'm using is a 4N33. It's a very simple optocoupler. Um, pin 1 and 2, uh, those are the ones that connect to the flipper. And pin 6 is not used. Pin 5 and 4. 4 would go to the negative side of your battery, and 5 would go to the negative side of your LED array. And the positive side of your LED array would go to your positive side of your 12 volt battery and as far as one and two on here actually we can take a look and you can see where is it there the white wire is number one and the brown wire is number two so we go over here and brown wire is ground and white wire is uh a7 and like it says on flipper gpio pin a7 and there you go that's all you need to do guys you got yourself an opticom transmitter that operates at 10 12 or 14 hertz and uh yeah okay talk to you later And tell me what you think about that. That is going to be an infrared blaster that is going to be able to hit Opticoms. We're probably going to be adding uh, another a battery to this as well because of the power demand. So guys, check it out. Check out IoT Mug. IoT Mug, guys. Check them out.